Good morning. Happy happy Thursday. Uh, welcome to this morning's Coffee with the Principal. Glad you're here. Um, thank you for tuning in on this different day. We usually do it Fridays. Uh, we're doing this week's on Thursday. Um, so welcome. Glad you're here. And as always, um, I hope you've had a great week. Um, I've just got a couple of announcements to start us off with, uh, which I'll share with with our, our folks who are live here. And then I will turn over to one of our many amazing parents that we have here at the school, uh, Loja, who is going to share with us about um, some steps to start a parent booster club here at Katherine Johnson STEM Academy. Um, one of the things you may hear in the background is we're, because we have the different testing schedule, we have um, our, our fun field day going on this morning outside of right on our front lawn. So apologize if it gets a little bit loud out there, but uh, Zoom may do a good job of muting it. Well, we shall see. All right. So again, thank you so much for, for joining today and we will we will get started. So just as a reminder, you've joined the meeting muted. Feel free to use the chat box as needing needed. We are recording this meeting and uh, we encourage you to leave your video on. It's certainly uh, not necessary. Um, feel free to use the raise hand feature or the chat box or the Q&A when we get to that point. So we have basically after today, we've got two weeks to go, which is hard to believe. Um, and so uh, your young people have done amazingly in the last uh, in the last seven weeks with finishing up the fourth instructional unit, with um, reviewing the year's content. And then these last two weeks, uh, students have been engaged in uh, state testing. And so they're finishing up those today. Um, Ms. Sanchez has done an amazing job at coordinating that. And we'll be giving some free dress passes to kiddos who have uh, who finished all of those um, today. So we're excited about that. Last two weeks, uh, even though we're done with testing after this week, we'll be doing some makeups in the next couple of weeks, but there's a lot of stuff that's happening in the next two weeks. And we want to briefly outline what that looks like just for these next two weeks. Um, so a couple of things. Um, one is that this evening or this late afternoon uh, at four o'clock, eighth grade families are invited to attend uh, a live Zoom that's gonna be led by our culmination committee, which is chaired by Ms. Guith. And it will go over end of the year activities, uh, timelines, eligibility, all that sort of stuff. So you don't wanna miss that for eighth grade families at 4 p.m. today, and the link is right there. Um, additionally, uh, tomorrow night is grad night for eligible uh, eighth graders um, who are who want to participate in that. And then Saturday, there is a rugby clinic uh, for all. Um, there is a permission slip for the rugby clinic on Saturday if you want your family or you want your child to participate on that. Shout out to Miss um, uh, to Miss Casimir for organizing that. Then next week, there's a lot going on as well. Again, last two weeks. Uh, next, this coming Monday, there is no school. It is Memorial Day. Um, so um, there is no school this coming Monday. And then Tuesday, starting Tuesday, um, all our students are have been working on their presentations of learning. Um, sixth and seventh graders record their presentations of learning using a Chromebook and then upload it to a platform so our teachers can see it and review it. Um, it's just uh, something, you know, between them and the, and the and, and their, their teacher of that period. Our eighth graders, on the other hand, they present theirs live. And so we have a schedule for eighth grade presentations starting next week. Uh, we still have some slots for parents and community members to come join us. We've got some, some parents and community members already signed up to join us and be panelists on that. But that's happening Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week, and then the following Monday, June 5th. Um, next Wednesday, May 31st, Miss Alejandra is leading our last field trip of the year. It is a seventh grade field trip. Uh, it is not to Leo Carrillo State Beach. It is to a different place because Leo Carrillo is having some uh, maintenance done on them. Uh, then next Thursday, there is a whole school dance or rocket celebration. Um, and then Friday, there is the eighth grade formal. Both of those events are happening here on campus uh, down at the Westchester Social Hall that we've used for events in the past before. Then finally, the last week of school, June 5th through the 9th, um, 
Tuesday, the June 6th, uh, after school from 4 to 6 p.m. is the 8th grade family beach party at, at Dockweiler. And then um, we'll be doing some fun activities here during the school day with, with everyone else. We'll also have, it's not up here, but we'll also have... Um, uniform donation week that week so for you know we have school uniform and um we have our school uniform and it's it's um you know a lot of kids grow over the summer so families don't have use for it anymore so families will have the opportunity to go home or to uh to to um to donate that uniform and to uh, get a free dress pass for their kids uh, for uniforms that they donate. Um, but that's optional. And then Friday, June 9th is a minimum day. Uh, dismissal is at 1.23 p.m. Um, all students are dismissed at that time. And then our eighth grade culmination ceremony is, is that afternoon here at 2.45. Our gates will open at 2.15 um on friday the june 9th and after that is summer so we hope that you and your family will have a great summer um just as a reminder we have a few slots left for parents if you want to be a participant on the eighth grade live presentations of learning you can you certainly do not have to um there's a link to sign up there uh if you're a seventh grade parent and you want to kind of see what this is like for your child what what they'll be doing next year you can come check that out too be a panelist uh there's the link right there and then again one more time the permission slip for the rugby link is right whoops right here uh, i'll put this in the chat as well um this is a cool opportunity um that ms casimir is leading uh this weekend just as a reminder, uh, thank you for everyone who responded to our survey about present about uh, transportation next year. We're excited to be able to offer it. Um, we have already submitted to the district. We submitted the, this morning the list of families who requested transportation. If for some reason you missed the deadline on this, uh, please reach out to me and we'll see if we can get your name in there for transportation. All right. Last thing I'll say. Yeah, last thing I'll say before I turn over to Ms. Loja is this. Um, we, I'll be start off by saying this. I love technology and we love technology here at Katherine Johnson STEM Academy. Uh, technology is the T in STEM and we really, really love it. And we, and we know it's powerful to do amazing things to change the world in so many powerful ways. Um, that said, it is not without its risks. And what many people have had a sense of for years now is that while technology is good it can it can it can propose it can uh, pose some potential risks particularly to young folks um and we at this school have had that sense for a while um we when we implemented our no cell phones on campus policy over a year ago, it was like a year and a half ago, uh, it was largely informed by what we were seeing as the impacts of things like social media and cell phones on, you know, adolescent and teen mental health. And so we, we said, you know what, no cell phones on campus, we, we just want kids to focus on learning and building connections with teachers and with peers here. Um, I think I shared this on Class Dojo already, but this week, the U.S. Surgeon General released a report warning that social media, in effect, does have, uh, you know, certain risks and certain potential harms, particularly to adolescents. And so, um, you know, obviously every family is different. Every family has got to make um, their own decisions for their family. But I would encourage, and I'm actually encouraging uh, all of our families to uh, check out some of these resources here, have open discussions with your family about technology, about social media in particular, um, taking a look specifically at the at the research that is out there. Um, you know, when the when the U.S. Surgeon General says something, you know, it's it's kind of like when they when they when they uh, put those warning labels on cigarette boxes or on uh, or on alcohol or or things like that. It 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 wouldn't surprise me. This is just Kyle Hunsberger's prediction. It wouldn't surprise me that you know, ten years from now, we look at social media the same way we look at something like 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 alcohol um which when used by uh people who are 
age appropriate and responsibly is fine. However, um, um, needs to be very, very, needs to be monitored heavily. And in some cases or in certain ages, um, completely, completely restricted. So this is a, you know, stay tuned because I am sure in the next three to five years, there'll be, there'll be some changes when it comes to policy research and, and even practice, uh, whether it's in LAUSD or just nationwide on this. So stay tuned, look at the research, but most importantly, have those conversations with 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 your child and and with your family about this. So uh, that's all I'll say about that uh, for now. Um, and then the last piece, and here's where I will turn it over to uh, one of our amazing parents, uh, Miss Loja. And for the last um, couple of years, we haven't had a a parent booster club here at Katherine Johnson STEM Academy, but uh, we've had like little little pockets of interest. And last week, I I sat down with Miss Loja, and she said, "Yeah, I wanna I wanna kind of lead the charge in starting one." So she and I met, and uh, I'm excited because Miss Loja is awesome. I think most of you know her. Uh, if you if you don't know her yet, uh, you will. Um, and I want to say thank you, Miss Loja, for uh, all you're doing. And let me let me go on mute, and I will turn it over to you. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? I have a very little voice. Yes, um, we, yes, yeah. you're, we can hear you just fine. Okay, thank you. Um, so, Mr. Hunsberg and I met last week regarding restarting um, our school's booster club. And um, so I have been doing a bit of research regarding it. And it's the information you provided me for Parent Booster USA was awesome. They basically do everything for you. So what we are, all the parents at Katherine Johnson will need to do is show up, be present. Um, and it's parent participation for me is, um, is one of the things that I've noticed in middle school that kind of dwindles. So with this booster club being reactivated, it will help just get our feet to the ground. Um, it'll start us off at a very good pace. And so what we're looking for currently, or what I'm looking for is parents who are willing to donate towards the startup fee for Parent Booster USA, because it's such an awesome organization um, and they do everything for you. The fee that is $500 registration fee is very much worth it. Um, they do all the filing for us. Um, all we have to do basically once we do get it started is to show up. So I found a donor who will match up to $250 towards our $500 startup fee. So if you know any parents who are willing to donate the just a minimum of $25, if they have more to give, that's awesome. But even $5, $2, whatever amount they can afford would be awesome. Um, so if you can spread the word to, you know, friends and family or just anyone who may be interested in helping us to get this going, that would be great. Um, with, our, with us having a booster club, we will become a tax-free um, entity so that all the monies that we accumulate will go towards things that we need for our school for activities for our kids, um, for extra support for our teachers in terms of their time, them don't being able to donate their time. We want parent participation. Um, if we can get this going, I will um, set goals for us. Hopefully we can, um, I'm thinking that if we can get 60% parent participation starting, that would be awesome. Um, towards the end of the school year. Um, there are a lot of schools I've noticed that are doing a fundraising um, a fundraising flash where they're just asking parents to donate money so they can get kickstart their next year, their 2020, 2023, 2024 school year, just to see where they'll be able to, um, to put that money in terms of what the students will be able to do. Our booster club, um, since we're such a small school, we'll go towards just boosting our school in general and not specifically um, in the beginning areas of interest. Because I noticed when I was going through the, the modules for the, uh, are the courses for the Booster USA startup um, that 
they have different boosters for different areas of the school. So there will be a, a sports booster or um, we have BSAP. So there will be a BSAP booster. Um, but for us, we're not, I'm going to try not to um, to go in that direction. Um, yeah, it's amazing. They have, uh, if you can look, take a look at the link that Mr. Husberger provided to see what they have to offer. It, it's just an amazing organization. Um, and like I said, they do all the filing for us. We just pay the fee and then we just figure out what we're going to do in terms of um, how we're going to raise our money, what it's going to go towards. We'll set up our budget. We'll set up our um, booster committee. Um, and that will be something else that I'll be looking for once we get this going is um, people who are willing to dedicate the time to be on the booster committee. I don't know what else, um, if there's anything else Mr. Hunsberger wants to add, but it's just, it's amazing. And I would suggest that each parent individually take a look at the link um, so that we can get this going. I don't know what to say. I'm not as public with that. So I was, did just to that. That was great, Loja. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was that was great. Um, are there any questions from folks who are here live uh, that you might have for Loja at this time? Please feel free to ask me anything. Um, Hi, I'm sorry. I may have missed this. I'm sorry. I'm at work, so I'm trying to work and listen. Um, in terms of parent participation, are, is there like a booster club board or is it there all just general members? No, there will be a board. Each parent will actually be a member. Um, each parent, yes, from the school will be a member, but there will be a booster club board that will um, make decisions regarding, you know, what the booster club has going on. And in terms of participation, it's not just monetary. Um, like I said, every parent will eventually become a member of the Booster Club. However, we do want parents to physically be engaged because it's not just about the money. It's about being there and supporting the students as well. And that's a big, 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 that's a huge, I mean, it has a huge impact on the students when the parents are engaged. Regardless of if it's their parent or another parent, they feel that love and that connection to the school. They feel it, it builds more of a community the more we can have parent engagement rather than like financial, you know. Of course, the money's always good, but um, when the parents are involved, it just, it creates more of a community for our students. And I'm just like, we, well, we've spoken in these meetings about mental health. We've spoken about um, students having the support they need. And I'm like, not every home is a safe space for kids. And I realize that. Um, so the more of a community we can create for our students, I think the better the outcomes will be. There's like, um, it helps with behavior problems. It helps, you know, with just, like I said, a sense of community, a sense of belonging. And that's what, you know, you want from your parent, you know, organization for your school. You want to create that sense of community for your students. Awesome. So there, oh, there go ahead. Be, I'm sorry. Sorry, yeah. All, all that to say, yeah, there will be a board. Um, we will have to say once we get everything in motion, we'll sit down and we'll formulate a board. There'll be bylaws that we will need to create. So we definitely need parent engagement because it's not, this is just a small part. Getting it going is a small part of what it is we're trying to accomplish. Thank you so much. Great question. Any other questions? So if you have, if you know parents and they're not able to attend, um, the coffee with the principal, which I very much appreciate you being here, especially since you're working. Um, spread the word. You know, this is what we're trying to do. This is what, you know, this is what will be the beneficial to our students. They need this. 
will help them thrive. Thank you so much, Loja. And so here's what the specific next step is going to be. Uh, this is a completely parent-led organization, so I'm deeply appreciative to Loja and other parents who are going to step up and lead this. Um, the the one, so I think the small hurdle to get over is the is the startup fee. I think I think that's the small hurdle because I think it'll be no problem in getting, uh, you know enough people who want to just donate a little bit to, to cover that startup fee. Um, the, the other hurdle, which I think is a small hurdle, but the piece that I can help is this. Uh, I am not, you know, I, I am not permitted by law or policy to share any, any parent information with anybody unless they opt into that. So what I'll be doing is I'll be sending a Blackboard Connect message uh, either today or tomorrow to our school-wide community saying, hey, Miss Loja is going to be leading a parent organization. Would you like to opt opt into this? And, and with your permission, I can share your email and your phone number with Miss Loja, and then she can handle like reaching out to those folks about next steps. So I, I cannot preemptively share any information with Loja, but I can ask parents if they would allow me to do that. And if I do that, then Loja has essentially a roster of families who want to who want to get involved so super appreciative of that so um i'm experimenting right now with uh blackboard and i'm i'm thinking there's a way to like actually get that result on like a phone survey where it's like press one if you are okay with me sending your information or so just be on the lookout for that um and then i believe that is that is it so um Thank you so much for joining me today. We will uh, we'll, we'll publish this. We'll get this out there. We'll send the, the email to folks who weren't able to, to join us live. And uh, I want to wish you a great, a great Thursday. Um, and then there's school tomorrow, but there is no school on Monday. So we will see everyone uh, tomorrow. And then after tomorrow, we'll see everyone on Tuesday. The last Coffee with the Principal will be Friday, June 2nd. It will be next week because the final the final one of the year is a minimum day and there's culmination, so we won't have one that week. But the last Coffee with the Principal of the year will be next Friday, I believe, June 2nd. So thank you all so much. Have a wonderful Thursday. And uh, if I don't see you tomorrow, have an, have an excellent day. Uh, three-day weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and we'll see everyone back here on Tuesday. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.